live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's CUBE's live coverage of Las Vegas. Day three, we're wrapping up the show for AWS reInvent. I'm John Furrier, starting the signal from the noise. We want to thank Intel for sponsoring this amazing set, two sets here. Uh, we had double barrel CUBE action all week, and thanks to Intel, we wouldn't be able to do it and bring the great content to you. And today, thank them for supporting our mission. We're going to wrap up the show with Stu Miniman, Corey Quinn, two experts who are scouring the floor, doing interviews, talking to everybody, and myself. Corey, great to see you. It is great to see me, John, thank you. You're awesome. Um, got a, quite a following these days on your work. Your business is growing, congratulations. Well, thank but you. I saw you running around at the win. You're definitely working hard. So what are you learning? What are you seeing? What's, the, what's your analysis of the show holistically? I, I think that Amazon, specifically AWS's product strategy remains what it has been, and that is simply yes. There is remarkably little that seems that it is beyond something that AWS would take an interest in. Uh, if you'd asked me to predict what they would have released at Midnight Madness, I would have had several guesses, none of which would have been, well, it's a piano keyboard thing that also does machine learning, and my follow-up would be, well, of course it is. Does it also make fries? And at this point, well, sure, it makes a certain twisted sort of sense. Maybe it's too many days of reinvent in a row. Maybe it's just, at this point, a certain level of cynicism that I can no longer escape. But at this point, very little surprises me, but it seemed to be a very AWS event through and through. The volume and the velocity of, of announcements was at the same level as last year. No real change there. Yes, I am saddened to report that the reInvent house band is still there and has not yet been put to sleep to spare them and ourselves further misery, but we'll see. You didn't like the band. I think the band is a slightly hokey. I would change the lyrics of some of the things that they're singing to at least be humorous. If you're going to go corny, go all in. The guy did nail the queen notes. Oh, they're terrific performers. It has nothing to do with that, but it is eight o'clock in the morning, so one has questions. Uh, I, think, I think the keynote could have been a sleeper if without the band, don't you think? I, I do mean, maintain that I want an Alexa skill that is just Andy Jassy reading rock lyrics. I would pay serious money for that. All right. Well, he did put some thought on Stu. Your thoughts on the show. Wrap it up, man, what's going on? Look, I mean, the, 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 show, the show, as Dave Vellante says, Amazon always delivers with the shock and awe. You know, broadest and deepest, so many pieces here. Uh, you know, I took a selfie with uh, many people and the biggest celebrity of the show, AWS Outpost, the rack, it's over in the corner there. Uh, and uh, people are asking me about all the gear inside. I said, you should stop asking about that because you will never touch it, only AWS will. So put a curtain around it. It's managed as a service and that's what I think people are still trying to understand. We've been talking about cloud for, what, 15 years now, but Amazon's positioning on cloud is still different than everyone else's. When I think back to some of the waves, there's that buzzword and there's one or two that really architecturally are different and deliver and Amazon laid out their strategy even more and through the geeky pieces and transformation was the theme. Hey Corey, Talk of transformation, I met you at this show a few years ago and your special skill back then was wearing a three-piece suit. Indeed. The problem is, is when you start talking about cloud billing and cloud accounting and that sort of thing in a three-piece suit, you look like you're a CPA that got lost somewhere. So, my brand and personal sartorial preferences is, have continued to evolve. When you're talking about Outpost though, you're right, it's the clear star of the show and I love that product so much. Not because of what they say about it, but because of the subtext that comes along with that product. Yeah. Namely that, look, you're going to run things on-prem and the problem, of course, is that you suck at managing hardware. Now, this is going to take a lot of that away. You're still going to suck at providing connectivity and power and AWS does not have anything to announce around those at this time, but we're slowly, delicately prying your grubby little hands off of the hands-on hardware server hugger mentality and dragging you lovingly, kickingly, and screamingly into the best technology that, let's say 2012 has to offer at least. It's modern-ish. So, so, our cloud, buyers naive if they're just going to be buying these solutions from other clouds or pre-packaged solutions. Is that really cloud or do they care? I mean, what's the difference between cloud native and cloud naive? What's your perspective? Besides I, the, word, the letter T. Oh, of course. I, I think that there's a definite spectrum on how cloudy something can be. 
if you want to just take everything running in your, in, in your existing data center, virtualize it, and then just put that into an AWS region, okay, great. There are ways to do that, and most of them have a VMware price tag tied to them, but okay, is that cloud-ish? Is it the best approach? Maybe. I think it's hard to bucket all customers into one. Everyone's at a different place on their journey, and I guess architecture shaming, it's, oh, what are you going to do with that piece of crap? Like about $8 billion of revenue a year, why do you ask? There are valid reasons to do a lot of different things and be at different points on your journey. I like seeing Twitter for Pets evolve and do the latest and greatest thing. I don't like seeing, for example, my bank doing the exact same thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's the beauty of the cloud is in the eye of the beholder. I mean, what he's saying is, and what Jazz is saying is, look it, you can't just take you know, everyone and put them into a bucket. It's what you do with it. It yeah. really comes down to what you want to do. I mean, John, I go back to you know, one of the things Werner said on the keynote stage. Everything fails all the time. The difference between the old architecture, which was I'm going to do everything I can and I'm going to throw money and hardware at things to make it enterprise. Well, the new enterprise needs to look like what the hyperscalers have been doing, which is you build for software, which means that everything fails all the time. The, our friend the chaos monkey will come in here and it doesn't matter what piece goes down, the application needs to stay up running. It's about the application, uh, you know, application developers at yeah. the center of what's going on here and you know, that modernization. I, I really liked Andy Jassy's answer to what I told him, asked him about is if we go through this cloud adoption, we talk about simplification and people want to buy over solutions, but the successful company of the future right. will be builders. I, I got I to ask you guys this question. I talked to a friend, um, and I guess I have friends. So, he's in IT for a big company. And um, I said, hey, what do you think? AWS or Azure? And I won't give any way the names, but he says, look it, we don't know what we're doing. Like, we're old school IT. We're running a billion dollar business and we have network security. We're classic IT, we know we got to get there. The boss is saying, get to the cloud. And frankly, if we move to Amazon, half my team would either get fired or they wouldn't get it to work. So, we're just going to go with Microsoft because they've been selling us gear and stuff for decades. So, there we go, that's Azure. Yeah. Now, that has nothing to do with capability. That's a real life scenario that we're hearing, Stu. It's Corey. incredibly important because I, once upon a time I was a grumpy Unix admin because there's no other kind of Unix admin. And I was very anti-cloud for a long time. The reason was, was, I could come up with a whole list of flimsy justifications why the cloud was crap, but the honest answer was is that I had built my sense of identity around the thing that I knew how to do and the cloud was, felt like it was taking it away from what I was. It wasn't true. There is a growth path. It's not as long as people often think it is, but you can't fight the tide forever, and that world is slowly yeah. but surely eroding out from under you. Now, do you go Azure? Do you go AWS? That's going to depend on your, where you are, what your constraints are, what your business concerns are, but I also think it's a misstep to view the migration process solely as one of technology. But it's you people. Uh, uh, hold but on, I need to chime in here, John, because I think. You can it, slack it, in it, here it, too, it because the, people use that it instead of China. Goldilocks syndrome yeah. here. There is one cloud out there that you need to be a PhD and the smartest people out here to do it. There is one cloud out there that we're going to meet you where you are and you don't need to make any changes. What Amazon's trying to do is that balance between we want to make it uncomfortable enough to make the change that you can be successful in the future. Whether or not they've struck the right balance, I think is up for debate, and this is a journey, well, and there are varies out there, but well, I, I think that's how I see the well, three there's choices. A, there's a, there's a, well, first of all, there's two things. Psychology of just the, the, the change, right? To your Unix admin example and my friend, which is true, it's legit. Now the question is, how? what's the indifference of getting the path? But if you look at the hyperscalers, uh, Dave Vellante points this out all the time, they would spend engineering time to save money. So they had engineer solutions to save time. Enterprises would spend money to save time. Yeah. That's the general purpose computing market that used to be. Yeah. That's not like that anymore. It's the, not general purpose. The entire theme of this show seems to be aimed much more at Big E Enterprise than the bleeding edge uh, type of story. There was a lot more Goldman Sachs than Netflix, for example. And that's a good thing, and that's okay. Yeah, I think it's great there's thing. still room to grow. I mean, they did not announce an AWS 400. There's no mainframe story <laughs> in the cloud as such. That's actually a mini yet. computer, technically. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm sure but it'll proprietary, one. But proprietary mini computer. You don't want to know what the billing <laughs> model looks like. If you know what AS 400 is, you're old like us. 
They call them <laughs> I-series now, but yeah, that's right, a U-series, done. <laughs> All right, guys, wrapping it up. This is a, the, big, the big point. Final word, Corey. Amazon, long game, still in play. No real impact from competition yet, but this, they're in the rear view mirror. They're seeing stuff. Did Amazon successfully move the distance between them and the competition at this event, at least from a narrative and or announcement standpoint? Well, I will say that no other cloud has a machine learning piano. So I think that that definitely is a, is a differentiating factor and it adds another item to a checkbox list somewhere that someone cares about. But as far as the core competency, I think Outpost absolutely opens up a world of opportunity for folks who otherwise would not take that step. I think that they are demonstrating a rapid execution story around what it takes to get big E enterprise workloads migrated and giving an on-ramp that doesn't require everyone being retooled, reskilled, and oh, everything you're doing is great, but it's awful, throw it away and start over. And then Stu, there's trillions of dollars of spend coming in to the sector. Certainly there's clear visibility of the operating models there. This IT spend, trillions are going to be on the table, up for grabs. Yeah, well, Your thought? John, uh, you know, it was interesting. I was watching a Netflix documentary actually about Bill Gates on the way and talking about what Microsoft went through after the antitrust piece. It is looming at, right in front of us for AWS. The market power they have, it's still a relatively small piece of the overall IT market. Absolutely, Amazon has the potential to take a big chunk out of that, you know, trillions of dollars there. Um, it is always day one here. They are always impressive as to the feedback loops, the way they are listening and they're growing. Um, so, you know, that was, you know, yeah. we said a year ago, it was the Oval Office, the executive office, was the biggest threat uh, to Amazon, and that yeah. still is the biggest threat I see. I think the big story here for this reInvent is Amazon recognizes two things. Big enterprises need to transform their way to be successful, to take advantage of the capabilities, not take a transitional incremental improvement. And two, they got competition and they see it. And the pressure's definitely on, they won't admit it, but Microsoft, through their sales machinery, is taking down spend. And that, if that trend continues, and will Microsoft have the ability to keep that going and not have diseconomies of scale for taking shortcuts, can Amazon keep the pressure on? Because that to me is the big story and then it's clear, the narrative is keep pushing hard and try to extend the lead out well, past everybody. And, and, Whatever and John, the answer is, customers win. John, yeah. Amazon still doesn't use the word multi-cloud. Their architectural design is not to solve multi-cloud, is it is to extend AWS uh, and it's interesting, we will see which design architecture wins out in the future, uh, but you know. Yeah. It, it's it, a three horse race, they want to be number one and I think they recognize multi-cloud, they won't admit it, but why would you, why, if you were building a PC, why would you promote the Mac? It's just yeah. like, I mean, and again, the commercial, who's the Mac guy and who's the PC guy, Corey? I mean, who's cooler, <laughs> Microsoft or Amazon? It, these days, that starts to become a bit of an open question. There have been fantastic transformational stories. As they say, it's not your grandfather's Microsoft. But then again, Amazon has made some interesting choices as we go too. Stu, the Mac guy was cooler than the PC guy in that, those famous commercials. A who's, absolutely who's, the, who's cooler, Amazon well, or Amazon? Hate and you. it's interesting, Corey, when you look at some of the cultural pieces, absolutely, yeah. Microsoft has gone through some transformations, but Amazon was, you know, from and talking about AWS, they are cloud native. Yes. <laughs> they are cloud. So they're cooler <laughs> by Stu Stan. Okay, depends how you look at it. This is a wrap up, guys. Thanks for coming in, Corey. Thank Good to you see for you. having me. I know it's you're working hard. Corey Quinn, one of the hardest working guys in the business, along with Stu Miniman, Dave Vellante. I'm John Furrier for John Walls, Jeff Frick, Leonard, and the whole team. Thanks for watching. And I want to say thanks to our sponsors who support our mission which is to bring theCUBE to events and do as much high quality content as possible with creators, with decision makers, with executives, develop, whoever's got the action, the signal from the noise, we get that supported by our sponsors. So without them, we wouldn't be here. And of course, Intel had the naming rights studio sponsorship as the headline. So I thank Intel and AWS for supporting this two stages here at AWS. So thank them and thanks to the entire team for watching. That's a wrap for AWS reInvent 2019. Thanks for watching.